Greetings, friends in Christ. It is Friday, September 4th, because September 5th, which is Saturday, of course, we're going to have an outdoor service at 1030, so I hope you can join us. It'll be our last one for the year. Uh, we've had one each month through this summer, and we can already feel a bit of fall coolness coming into the air. So it'll be a, I think it'll be a beautiful day for it, and uh, we invite you to join us. But here on Friday, I'm going to read, uh, between these two days, a story um, from Roger Thompson's book, again. Um, we Stood Upon the Stars, and uh, it's a beautiful story about uh, he and his wife, and uh, some traveling that they have done together. So I'm going to read from the second chapter of Genesis from the message. And these are verses 18 through 25. God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I'll make him a helper, a companion. So God formed from the dirt of the ground all the animals of the field, all the birds of the air. God brought them to the man to see what he would name them. Whatever the man called each living creature, that was its name. The man named the cattle, named the birds of the air, named the wild animals, but he didn't find a suitable companion. God put the man into a deep sleep, and he, as he slept, he, God removed one of his ribs and replaced it with flesh. God then used the rib that God had taken from the man to make woman and presented her to the man. The man said, Finally, bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. Name her woman, for she was made from man. Therefore a man leaves his father and mother and embraces his wife. They become one flesh. This is called Highway Poetry, and they are on Highway 1 from Santa Barbara to Big Sur, California. I'm going to read half of this chapter today and half tomorrow, so you'll have to tune in to hear the end of the story. As a young man, I thought a lot about vans. I came by it honestly, living for a time as a child in a Santa Cruz hippie commune. Shortly after, my dad and uncle built a tiny home on the back of a partially restored 1939 two-and-a-half-ton flatbed Dodge. The home was complete with a rock fireplace, second-hand stove, and paisley window curtains sewn by my mom. I have cherished photos of living there for a time on new beach property created by the carving of a freeway north of Ventura, California. Since the land was new, my uncle was able to homestead the property and was eventually dubbed the mayor of oil piers. I look at the photos often, though they are fading along with the freedom of that age. When I turned 16, my natural inclination was to purchase a VW van, paint it myself, and spend the summer exploring back roads of America. As awesome as this sounded, the road trip scenario was vastly improved by the thought that the girl I loved at the time would accompany me. She'd sit in the passenger seat with her blonde hair tussled by desert winds, whistling through rolled-down windows over the music of Fields of Gold by Steam. She and I talked once about taking the trip, but when my birthday rolled around, I was given a decade-old two-seater Toyota truck, and our conversations drifted toward how our relationship would be better as friends. I lost the girl, but not the dream. It was eventually replaced with an even better reality. My honeymoon brought the next opportunity for a cross-country road trip with a beautiful woman. My wife and I traveled Highway 1 North along the Central California coast between Santa Barbara and Carmel. Everything was exciting and new, and sex came intense and fast. We stayed in affordable hotels and camped out in the back of my truck, but it wasn't a van. And it wasn't until years later that I had the chance to realize my dream. Our 10-year anniversary present to each other was a VW Westphalia Synchro purchased through the internet from its owner who lived in Bozeman, Montana. 
We named the van Madison after a favorite fly fishing river nearby. And once the van arrived at our home, we made plans to retrace our honeymoon trip. VW vans loom large in American road tripping mythology. Like horses in a previous time, they symbolize freedom. VW vans possess other similarities to horses. They are exactly one horsepower, for instance. Any hill requires shifting down into second or first, and they seldom reach the posted speed limit, even on flat ground. Also like horses, VW vans are unpredictable. They need constant attention and can sense your feelings. You can't let them know you're afraid. In spite of all this, there's a reason VW vans are so popular. Their imperfections and unpredictability allow travel on a more human level. Cars now are hermetically sealed from the outside world and are driven in complete detachment. Vans put us back in the story. And this part of the trip is called Santa Barbara. Our trip began with coffee in Santa Barbara, only a few miles from where we live. Santa Barbara makes me feel poor and fat. It's an abusive relationship, but it's so close I often go to one of its cafes to write. And whether it's 10 a.m. or 2 p.m., I know the place will be crowded with beautiful men and women in yoga pants. I'm always suspicious because they're never sweating. In fact, I've come to believe people in Santa Barbara do not sweat. All the sweaty people are herded and shipped to my town. I also assume that if Santa Barbarans ever do sweat, it smells like seawater spritz and lavender. Native Santa Barbarans are like wood elves. They have magical powers to stay beautiful for an unnaturally long time. If you see one, you should try to capture him or her. Despite my feelings, I'm inspired every time I go there. Every block transports me to another time and place where no one works and friends enjoy long conversations over cappuccinos and farm-to-table salads. The buildings have an old world charm with clay tile roofs and white stucco walls. Everything is inspirational. The streets, the buildings, the art, the Mexican food. I eat like locals, but the food has a different effect on my body. <laughs> Santa Barbara is like a girl in high school who is destined to be a movie star. I'm like a kid who had classes with her since grade school. She always say, she'd always say hello, but when I finally worked up the nerve to talk to her, she called me by my wrong name. I know I'm in an abusive relationship with Santa Barbara, but I still come back. Sometimes I can't even say why. I think it's for the guacamole. So tune in tomorrow for the final destinations on their trip, the next destinations. Let us pray. Thank you, God that you give us this life in which we are given the opportunity to love others, to connect with them, to become beloveds, to marry, to go through life together. We pray for all those who are buried and who are perhaps struggling during this time of pandemic, who find too much time together. We pray that they will see a way to uh, infuse their time together with a new love or maybe a relearning about love. Maybe they'll infuse it with some walks on the beach together and holding hands. We know, God, that relationships take work and it's a particularly uh, opportune, time, opportune time to uh, pay attention to one another as Roger does to his beloved wife in this book and in these stories to come tomorrow. We pray today for all couples who are happily making their way, even though there are always some ups and downs. We pray for those who are struggling because of loss of work or illness, for those who are having trouble with childcare 
and the start of school and all of the things that happen at this time of the year normally. And then on top of that, we are adding fear of illness in this pandemic. So help us, gracious God, to find our way and make a way where there sometimes seems to be no way. Help us to remember to turn it over to you, for you are our guide and friend. We pray our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught his disciples to say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Maybe you can recall with your beloved some wonderful trip that you had together. Or maybe you're planning one now. This would be a good time to be planning one in the future to look forward to.